Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. Now, it's been a while since my last episode, or since the last posting, and since my last recording, uh, for that matter, uh, of course, with Christmas and everything. And I hope you guys had a wonderful, if you celebrate it, um, <laughs> I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas, and uh, looking forward to New Year's and everything. I was, I was actually gone for quite a bit of it. We ended up going up to St. Louis. Spend time with my grandmother because she had surgery and, uh, you know, she couldn't travel this year. So we went up there and spent some time with her. And then, of course, lots of Christmases <laughs> to go to and everything. So I have been away for a little bit. So, um, But we are back now, which is great. It's great. Great to be back. Um, since last episode, I can't remember. I think um, this hasn't been shown since I did it. I finished the walls and stuff through here. Um, and I did a lot of miscellaneous work. All the molecular assemblers up inside the AE2 room now have acceleration cards in them. So that's great. Um, I dug this little area out. Um, it's going to lead down to that room, which still has a ton of work to do. I can't exactly remember because it's been, you know, it's been so long. Um, I did put a railing around here. This has produced mana and it has backed up everything. I did run into one issue after setting up this setup. That I noticed after last episode it was basically making just hash um, because it wasn't it wasn't you know alternating so I basically put these levers down here so I could stop it um, it has since pretty much backed up on everything <laughs> while I was gone for the Christmas vacation um, and also mana is completely backed up well not completely backed up there's actually a little bit of space in here of course we said it's like a 13 um, threshold so you can see there's a little bit of space in there but it's pretty well backed up and all of these are filled up now so that that worked out very very well um, and then of course we have this little area down here that we're going to be using today we're going to quickly automate Terra Steel and then we'll see how much time we have left and then play it by ear we may do some cleanup work we might do some more Batania or something um, we're getting ready to move into some some heavy Batania stuff so like I promised <laughs> So anyways, Terra Steel Automation. We're going to go ahead and jump into that. We did get this open crate put up up here. And we got the demagnetizer. These are both very important. So that way our magnets don't pull in uh, the stuff that's on here. Um, and the main tricky things about Terra Steel Automation that actually takes any kind of real involvement other than just plugging up an item line to it is the fact that, um, of course, it's in-world crafting. It's a popular thing these days for in world crafting of course terra still has been around forever so it's not really a these days kind of thing um and then in addition you cannot drop if i was to drop say two mana steel two ender pearl or two mana pearls and two mana diamonds it's not going to craft terra steel it has to be just one of each and it has to sit there right on the terrestrial agglomeration plate until the crafting is done until it makes terra steel if you interrupt it by either moving an item picking up an item um, or dropping say a second mana steel it's going to interrupt it and it's going to basically you're just going to have wasted mana okay so you need to make sure that it always has just one of each of those on there and that's where pretty much the technical part of automating Terra Steel comes into play so with that said let's go ahead and quickly get this thing automated I did go ahead and prep some stuff and we're going to have to grab a couple other small things not a big issue we're going to be using xnet for this a combination of xnet ae2 some random things um we're going to be using a few mods there's like everything there's a million different ways that you could do this um i find that xnet is just it's kind of handy plus um since we're not really using we're trying to avoid using ender conduits and there's a bit of logic within the system we're going to use xnet because it tends to be pretty reliable in terms of that um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just set up our controller and we're just going to put this, uh, we'll go ahead and put down the key components and then we're going to plug things up. So we're going to have a controller that sets, say, right here. Placement, of course, on that doesn't really matter. Uh, Spectre coil just to provide this with some power, some free power we never have to worry about. Um, we're going to have a phantom face and we're going to have this phantom face setting, uh, we'll put it right, I'll we'll put it right here, okay? And then let's grab our phantom connector and we're going to go up here to the open crate shift right click block store to this connector come down here shift right click the connections fine and working it's connected to the open crate 11 blocks away okay so that's set up and that phantom face basically we're just going to pump items into that phantom face and they're going to come out 
the bottom of the, uh, the open crate. Okay, so then we're going to have an entity detector. This is going to set, uh, I think if we put it right, uh, if we put it right here, this should be fine. And if we were to set the Y radius up, let's say seven, okay. And then if I was to put down, let's double check, just make sure that this is working. If I put redstone down right there, uh, right now it's actually, it was detecting something. Oh, <laughs> derp. Derp, derp, derp. Um, right here, all entities. Change this to um, item, yeah, items right here. So if I was to pull that out now, it's not detecting anything. If I come up here and I drop a piece of redstone right there, you can see now it's detecting something. So, so it's emitting a redstone signal. Then if I was to put in our filter, and we need to make sure it's not that one, it's the other one. Correct. Uh, if we put this filter into there now, and we come up here and we were to drop redstone now, uh, it's still detecting it. Okay, that's not really ideal. I was thinking that it would it would use the filter, but apparently it's not. That's fine. That's fine. We can still work with that. Well, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to move this and place it right here instead. And we're just going to say that the radius... It's going to be one. Actually, we can set the X and Y radius down, and we'll set the Z, or I'm sorry. We'll set the X and Z radius down. We'll put the, the Y radius to, say, two. Um, and then it should, can't remember if this thing lights up or not. Uh, it doesn't, but um, it should only detect what's up there. And we'll check that here in just a second, so. Um, and then in addition, we're going to have a chest. Chest is going to set like right there. We're going to have an interface that's going to set, say, right there. And we'll go ahead and, as per usual, we're going to wrench the back of this. This actually leads down to those below caverns. Oops. There we go. We'll go ahead and wrench the back of that. It connects over in this direction. So it's going to feed items into the chest. And then on top of it, we're going to put an advanced item collector. This one is going to have a filter. We'll go ahead and pull these out, and we're going to say Terra Steel Ingots. You can only pick up Terra Steel Ingots. And we're going to put this right into there, and we'll go ahead and up these. It's fine. I don't think I can go any higher, but that's fine. All it's going to do is it's going to pick up drop Terra Steel, which shouldn't be anything, you know, it shouldn't be dropped on the ground anywhere except for here when it's done being created. That should be the only place. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to attach, uh, well, actually, I'm going to have a connector that fades directly into this entity detector. So I tell you what I'm going to do, just so that we can test it to make sure that our coordinates are just right. We're going to put that right there. Let's run a piece of redstone right there. So if I was to drop a piece of redstone there, no redstone signal. If I dropped a piece right there, no redstone signal. I drop a piece directly on top of the terrestrial agglomeration plate. You can see we now have a redstone signal. Okay. So only items pretty much on top of and above the terrestrial agglomeration plate. I believe it will detect the items as they're falling. So that's even better. That's why I went ahead and set the, uh, the Y on the us. Um, let's actually set the Y up to like four, five. That's great. There shouldn't be anything right above the terrestrial agglomeration plate except for items being dropped on the terrestrial agglomeration plate. So it's basically just going to detect it sooner um, in that case. Okay, um, and there's, of course, there's a lot of different options within the entity detector. You can do um, monsters, animals, all entities, players, items, you know, all that different stuff. And just a heads up, I am getting a little bit of lag tonight. That's actually not the server. That's my ISP because it's awesome and I love it. I love my ISP. Um, let's go ahead and get ourselves just a glass Fluix cable. That way we can plug up um, and let's actually set up a recipe real quick. We can go ahead and set up the recipe for this. Um, inside the pattern terminal, we're going to set this to processing. We're going to say that if you take one mana steel, one mana pearl, one mana diamond, you're going to get a Terra Steel Ingot. Okay, that's simple. Um, I'm not going to include any kind of mana detection system. Um, they're not hard to do, and the, 
the premise is true for pretty much every setup if you're interested in doing a mana detection system. Um, but I don't ever really see the point. Basically, if you scale up your mana production, um, it ends up just being a lot of extra redstone generally not needed. Um, you know, it's basically like over here we set it up with a comparator, you know, just replicate that over here and there you go. Uh, of course, in this case, you'd want to check multiple pools, but you can always do that with comparators. Um, and have them added together to ensure that you have at least a half mana pool's worth of mana in your system. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with the, I guess, with the Terra Steel for now. I don't think I really need that anymore. So I want to put that away. And then what I'm going to do, and by the way, I don't have these three items being auto-created within our system. Not a big deal because they take all of about a quarter of a second for me to craft them manually. Uh, we will automate them, just not yet. And then eventually we're going to, before too long, we're going to get to the point where we don't even have to automate Terra Steel this way. We're going to have it automated with Mystical Agriculture, so it's not all that important. Uh, for the long run either so um, but anyways let's go ahead and we're going to take some connectors we're going to plug up of course our controller we're going to plug up this chest we're going to plug up our entity detector and we're going to plug up this phantom face and I'm going to go ahead and say let's actually pull this up we don't need this connector right here and we'll put it right there so we're connected up to the controller which is just because you have to entity detector phantom face chest and that's it that's all the connections I think we really need for this setup um, because the item transfer is through the phantom face that plugs up to there okay so then what we're going to do is we are going to oh there is one other thing I'm gonna need connected up uh, let's pop over here let's get ourselves an hourglass we'll just use a hovering hourglass from Batania keep it botanical <laughs> within our setups and we'll add sand to this in a minute for right now. I'm just going to place it right here. That'll be great. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to set up um, some, some stuff. Okay, so right here, this chest, we're going to say channel 1 is going to be items. Channel 2 is going to be items. Channel 3 is going to be items. Our chest, we're going to go ahead and set this to extract. We're going to set it to extract. We're going to set it to extract. And then our phantom face, we're going to say insert, insert, insert. Let's see. I don't think there's much that we need to change here. Um, but right here on the chest, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to say that you extract mana diamonds, you extract mana steel, you extract mana pearls. And then once again, we're going to go ahead and set metadata matching to on on each of these just to make sure that our metadata matches and it's not trying to dump, um, you know, just whatever it wants to from the those three items. It only, it only drops the specified one. We're going to say single... Um, and what we're going to do over here, we're going to say redstone mode is um, do one operation on a pulse on each of these. So let's go ahead, one operation on a pulse. And we can leave this for 10 ticks. That doesn't matter. Extract mode is fine. Yeah, this will be good. So just do one operation on a pulse on each of these. We're going to, we're going to handle the pulse in just a minute. Channel 4 here. Um, we're going to set this to Xnet Logic or, yeah, Xnet Logic is what I want. Okay, so we're going to have the Hovering Hourglass is going to be its own logic system. We're going to say Sensor, number of ticks for each check is 10, that's fine. Uh, redstone mode is ignored, and we're going to set the Sensor mode to Redstone, Okay. Um, so if it gets a redstone signal, operator equal to, we're going to say, if it's greater than or equal to, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going to set it to, if it's greater than zero, then you're going to emit a signal on white. Okay, that's all we really need. Redstone greater than zero, put out a white signal. And then what we're going to do is right here, this entity detector. Yeah, actually, let's set this to enable on red. Okay, so if it has a red signal, then it can work. 
And then right here, this entity detector, we're going to create it. And we're going to say that it's a sensor number of ticks is 10. Uh, sensor mode is redstone. And right now I've got this set to all entities normal output. So it emits a redstone signal when there's an entity. Otherwise it does not emit a redstone signal, uh, which is great. That's what I want it to. That's what I want it to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, if the redstone is, uh, we'll say equal to zero, emit a redstone or emit on the red color. So if it's equal to zero, if there's basically if there's no redstone signal, output red. Okay. And then this works on red. And I just realized I had this set to all entities and these would be set to items. Make, make sure it's set to items because otherwise animals or you or pretty much anything is going to set it off. So make sure that's set to items. Um, so right now what we've got is it's checking this sensor. It's saying, is there any items on the terrestrial agglomeration plate? And if the answer is no, then it's going to emit a red signal. That's all that does. And then if it has a red signal, then it checks the hovering hourglass. If it goes off, the redstone is greater than zero. It, it allows a white signal to come out there. It's not redstone. It's just a signal color, right? And so then what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, a little bit of redstone here. We're going to put down cobblestone there. And we're going to run a little redstone circuit out like that. And then we're going to have a connector that sets right here and we're going to have a network cable that connects in right there and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up uh, this let me put this uh, we'll just call this chest in so that way we can differentiate because we don't actually need anything for this redstone this connector I need it to connect there I don't actually need it the controller to have any information for that oh this lag it's my provider is terrible. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to get fixed until a, just a new provider comes to this area. I really don't. Okay, so our chest in line, let's go ahead and make a logic line for that on channel 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to change it from sensor to output. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that if you get a white signal, you can output the redstone power will be 15. Okay, so emit a full 15 power redstone signal any time that white is active and of course white is only active if the hourglass is emitting a redstone signal and there's no entities on the terrestrial agglomeration plate okay and then what's going to happen is it's going to emit a signal here it's going to run up it's going to activate that which basically activates the chest which transfers everything into the phantom face or one one cycle of items so for example if i was to put in inside of this chest if i was to drop in 25 mana steel and we were to put, uh, let's do five sand just for testing purposes. I'm going to use, I think, 15 uh, for actual purposes. But um, if we give it a second, the hourglass is going to run down. There we go. We see the redstone activate, and look at that. We've got a piece of mana steel. Now, if we watch this for a minute, the hourglass is going to run down again, but you're not going to see the redstone dust activate. And that's because this is emitting a redstone signal, which is not allowing this to check the hourglass and thus turn on a redstone signal okay so basically if there's any entities up here it's not going to be able to cycle all right and so let's grab that and then if we give it a second we should see another piece of mana steel drop there we go okay so let me grab let me grab that out of there and then, of course, our item collector is already set up to uh, Terra Steel and all that stuff's good. So then if I was to come over here and I was to order, um, we can set this to blocking mode. It's actually not all that important. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn blocking mode on. Do not push crafting items if the inventory contains items. Um, just because we can. You know, like I said, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but then if we come over here and we were, let me go fix this uh, I could probably get away with just five sand, but I want to make sure there's plenty of time for it to drop and make up for any latency um, issues on the server or anything at a given time. So I think you could probably get away pretty good with like 10, maybe even less. But um, let's go ahead and order ourselves like four pieces of Terra Steel. Okay. And then if we come over here, we should say here in just a moment, it should drop the items. 
Now I've got to make sure that it sends all three items at once because if it doesn't, then it's going to detect the items and it's going to not allow it to drop anything else, um, which you know could become an issue. But I'm actually going to drop this down to ten sand. Fifteen is just too long. Whoops. Okay, so it should be just about to drop right now. Um, I should think. There we go. It drops all three items. We can see the Terra Steel gets crafted. It gets picked up. And then here in just a moment, it should drop another three items. There we go. And... Dun, dun, dun. And then you can, you can see it's, it's eating more mana because it has... Or it's eating more food because it has consumed that mana down. Uh, whoops. Okay, that's a visual bug, I guess. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, it's consuming, it's making more mana because it has begun to consume some of that mana. I may need to put like a demagnetizer up there because I've noticed if I fly up there whenever it drops something, I do manage to pick it up because the magnets are down here and not up there. So I may stick a magnet up there. I think it's already at max range, so. There we go. And that's our fourth piece of Terra Steel. Wonderful. Wonderful stuff. And you can see the mana really hasn't drained all that much out of these mana pools. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be able to craft like 50 pieces of Terra Steel with this setup because I have no mana detection system. Um, so eventually it is going to run out of, you know, it is going to run out of mana after I craft. Um, basically it takes a half a mana pool, so we're looking at uh, 8. So you're looking at 16 pieces of Terra Steel at field. Um, then you calculate that I've got another mana pool over here that stays about field whenever it's capped out. So you're looking at about, uh, what, about 18? And then it's going to be making some mana while it runs. So 18 or 19 Terra Steel before it starts kind of running into the issue of maybe not having enough mana. Um, which will definitely pose an issue if that comes up. So, But I'm probably not going to be ordering 18, 19 Mana Steel at the time. Um, it's going to be just kind of periodic orders, I think. Uh, because before too long, we will be crafting up... Um, our Terra Steel Seeds, because they're actually not all that bad. We do have to do a little bit of Astral Sorcery to do so, but then again, once again, not bad. So, uh, these are pretty easy, um, in truth. Uh, these are easy. These, we're going to be getting into that, that, all that stuff. So, <laughs> it's, it's not as bad as it looks. It's actually not too bad at all. Um, so, yeah, that's Automated Terra Steel. Yay. <laughs> that's done. Okay, now that we have, uh, we don't really have time this episode to jump into another setup or uh, really any progression, but I do want to do not really so much cleanup, but some of the stuff that we've been working towards. Okay, um, now first up, one thing, this is actually more cleanup than anything. Let's take our Terra Steel, and we are going to make ourselves, uh, if we take a look at this, we can make a sharpening kit. Uh, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we're going to go ahead and just melt this down real quick. It doesn't take all that long with UU Matter, luckily. My ISP makes it take longer than it should, but uh, it shouldn't take all that long. We'll go ahead and dump that in there, and basically this is just another gate quest, or another, uh, not gate, but harvest level quest. We can go ahead and turn that in and get four infusion crystals, which we won't have any use for. Uh, there's also the Supremium Sharpening Kit, which um, I think... I can't remember if we have two Supremium ingots or not. No, we don't. Um, I could probably pull some off, but I'm actually not that worried about it. Um, technically, I could apply that. I'm not all that worried about that either. I'm just going to go ahead and dump that in there for right now. I think we can melt it back down and get two Terra Steel out of it. Um, but anyways, the other thing I want to do, or another thing that I want to do, is let's go ahead, let's get ourselves a block of Terra Steel. And let's get ourselves uh, these terrestrial artifacts. We'll use those in just a second. Let's get ourselves uh, what we're going to be making. Let me just gather up all these things. We're going to be making the Master Infusion Crystal. If you recall, I said I didn't want to really start into a lot of magical or mystical agriculture until we got this. Not because it's difficult, because I showed you guys we can repair our infusion crystals, but just as more of a gate, because mystical agriculture is way OP. Um, especially in a pack like this, and it was a little bit more of a gate process to get up to this point. Now, resonating gems, we have not actually crafted these, but we have got them from loot, um, and they are obtainable in, um, if you take a look at 
Astro Sorcery, actually. I have a Shining Casing. Um, and this, if you're on the Discord, you may have seen, I posted some pictures when I was following this. This is a new feature of Astro Sorcery. And I found one of these um, when I was out gathering 82 meteors. Um, I came across this, and it kind of looks like a shooting star. And if you follow it uh, for a little ways, um, they're, they're actually at about Y1000, but they, they quickly drop in elevation, and they'll eventually crash into the Earth. And I think I mentioned this before, but uh, you get a shining casing. You also get some resonating gems and some different stuff, and we've also got some from Loot Chest. But you can't obtain these without actually crafting them. Um, it says something is shining inside the casing. Right-click to open. So let's go ahead and open this because I'm actually not sure. This is actually the very first one I've ever opened. So, yay. Okay, and I got uh, a Lucent Scroll. A strange constellation is drawn on the scroll. Discovering it should provide additional clues. Um, it says Saliti. 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 Uh, that's one of the new constellations. We'll get into that stuff as we get into uh, more Astral Sorcery. So... Um, but anyways, we're going to need um, a few different things here. We're going to need some resonating gems. We're going to need some sparks. Uh, these are very, very easy to craft. Um, we're also going to need, let's see, Master Infusion. Um, we're going to need four Mana Pearls. We're going to need Block of Mana Steel, Elementium, and Mana Diamond. Pride, Gluttony, Greed, Sloth. Okay, so I've got the resonating gems, the sparks, the mana pearls, the runes, the blocks. We're also going to need an ender amethyst. This is craftable with elementium and terrestrial artifacts, which um, are crafted like this. We've also got a lot of them from loot rewards. I think I have 16 of them at the moment, so I'm just going to grab one of those. And that's pretty much everything we need to make this. It's actually not too bad, especially if you kind of get lucky. Sim not even really lucky. Um, just very semi-lucky. <laughs> um... Uh, let's go to our temp astral area. Okay, and let's go ahead and lay this out. Um, I should have everything that we need for this. Okay, so I'm going to need to get the, the mana up to here, which I believe at nighttime it does get up to those levels. It looks like it's actually the sun is setting at the moment. Uh, so if we give it a minute, we should have the starlight that we need uh, to craft this. Okay, it looks like it's actually stopped, like <laughs> like one notch below where it needs to be. Um, which isn't awesome. Okay, so maybe we're going to have to wait to craft that until we get uh, just a little bit more into Astro Sorcery or we find a better place to do it. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Um, we'll just grab all the items and we'll hold off on that for a couple episodes. Uh, we will be, we'll be doing a little bit more Batania, but then as soon as we get done with just a little bit more Batania, we are going to be, uh, diving headlong into some astral sorcery uh here very very soon so what i'm going to do is i'm just i'm just going to put this in a chest for now and put it right here and we'll just dump all these these are the items that go into making the master infusion stone so that's fine that's fine if it if it takes us just a little bit longer to make that i don't have a problem with that so um, but at least we know we have everything for it so that's all squared away but um anyways i know it's about it's actually about wrapping up point for this episode so uh, we will get back to, we will come back to that, but Terra still is automated. We're going to be making use of that next episode and we're going to be having some fun with it. It's going to be exciting stuff. Um, I don't know if we're going to move on to the next thing next episode, which is the Gaia guardian, or if I want to do some mana automation for over here, because as you can tell, this is actually getting kind of low. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if we want to get some mana going through here, but I mean, technically, I can also pull mana from here and then siphon it over. It's not a big issue to do that. We are going to have to tackle this room, though, soon. So either Gaia Guardian or Mana Generation over there will probably be next episode. But uh, we have a couple We have a couple episodes of Batania coming up, and then we're going to be doing some Astro Sorcery um, focus because we haven't really focused on Astro Sorcery. It's just kind of been on the back burner for most of the... Most of the series so far, so it is about time that we do tackle that. We kind of took it in a weird direction because we pretty much did all of Thomcraft and then switched over, did a very minute amount of Astro Sorcery and then hit Batania and just ran with it. So um, I do want to get Astro Sorcery up and going so that we can actually start making use of this um, entire section down here. So we will be doing that here soon, but... Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, 
Be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And once again, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas if you celebrate it. Um, I do apologize I was gone for uh, about a week. <laughs> so um, I do apologize and uh, good to be back. It's good to be back. So anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. I'll see you guys then.